Welcome back to Wrestling Backlash. You may know billionaire Tony Khan as the mastermind behind All Elite Wrestling, but the passionate, heart on his sleeve figurehead of AEW is not just a prominent figure in the world of professional wrestling. He's a businessman, a sports enthusiast, and a visionary leader who has been instrumental within the landscape of sports entertainment across multiple sports. Before justified, this is awesome tweets were a regular feature of your weekly social media scroll, Tony Khan was a driving force behind sporting giants, from NFL franchise the Jacksonville Jaguars to Premier League football club Fulham FC. Stick around as we dive into the background of the billionaire brain of AEW, exploring his early life, his ventures outside of wrestling, and the remarkable impact he's made in professional wrestling. So how does a crazy journey across multiple sporting and entertainment ventures begin, you might ask? Well, being the son of a billionaire certainly helps. Tony was born October 10th, 1982, in Urbana-Champaign, Illinois, to Pakistani-American father Shahid Khan and an American mother, Ann Carlson. Tony grew up with a family deeply involved in business, and his father became a billionaire in the automotive industry through his ownership of Flexingate, a company specializing in supplying car bumpers. Tony embarked on an academic journey, graduating from the University Laboratory High School in 2001, and later earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Finance from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign in 2007. So where do things get interesting? In the NFL and in Jacksonville, of course. Tony's journey in the sports world began in the NFL, with the Jacksonville Jaguars following his father's purchase of the team in July of 2012 for around $770 million. While his father Shahid owns the team, Tony currently serves as senior president of football and analytics. It's Tony's job to oversee scouting, as well as player stats essentially. Likely the most notorious moment with Tony's involvement with the Jaguars came back in 2020, in a back and forth Twitter controversy with then Jaguars defensive end Yannick Ngakwe. Ngakwe, upset and wanting to be traded to another team lashed out at Khan, tweeting that they'd had a discussion over what would be his last game, and accusing Khan of not answering his team's calls and trying to hold him up, also calling him spoiled. Khan responded by tweeting, It's a new regime here, sir. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the contributions you've made here. That said, tweeting insults at me won't get you traded any faster. Only good trade compensation will do that. Please redirect your efforts into a more productive outlet. To that, Ngakwe responded again, Just trade me. I don't need the speed. Khan replied once more and got in a dig, tweeting, Show me the compensation. I'm sure you're really driving up the price today, by the way. And Gakwe was eventually traded to the Minnesota Vikings. Another prominent venture in the world of sports was Tony Khan's involvement with Fulham, a Premier League football club. On February 22nd, 2017, Khan was named as Vice Chairman and Director of Football Operations of Fulham, the team his father Shahid had bought back in 2013. He oversees the identification, evaluation, recruitment, general maintenance, and signing of players, a similar role to his Jaguars. Khan's first full season as vice chairman saw the breakout of youth product Ryan Sessegnon, as well as the mid-season loan signing of Alexander Mitrovic, as Fulham earned promotion to the Premier League by defeating Aston Villa in the playoff final of which he was present, known as the richest game in football, worth an estimated £265 million or $470 million to the winners in TV deals, sponsorship, and additional revenue streams. The next year was a huge struggle despite by an expensive spending spree after promotion. Halfway through that year, Khan was criticized for telling the supporter to go to hell after allegedly hounding him previously, and despite firing manager Slavisha Jokanovic and replacing him with Claudio Ranieri. Things did not improve and Khan came under huge criticism. Ranieri was then fired and Ian Wright and Chris Sutton questioned Khan's ability in the job, with Wright even suggesting that Shahid Khan should sack his son. Fulham placed 19th and were relegated, the second time under Shahid's owner and the first with Tony. Fulham once again won the richest game in football the year after gaining promotion through the playoffs and hoping to do better this time. In September of 2020, Khan was called a clown by Sky Sports pundit Jamie Carragher for tweeting critical comments of Fulham players and described the transfer history of Khan as a right mess, which wouldn't be the last time Khan was involved in a Twitter controversy. And Khan's comments angered then manager Scott Parker. Fulham ended the season in 18th place, resulting in another relegation. Though in the 2021-22 season, they topped the championship in first place, once again gaining promotion to the Premier League. In an interview with The Athletic, Khan stated he was also optimistic that this would be the season that Fulham would no longer be perceived as a yo-yo club. And it seems that he might have finally been right, as Fulham avoided relegation for the first time in the Premier League under Khan ownership, even hugely exceeding expectations in 10th place. Doubts persist regarding Khan's role at Fulham, particularly regarding his transfer decisions and expertise 
Vince, with many also frustrated with his focus on AEW, neglecting the club in the eyes of many fans as a result. In May of 2017, wrestling journalist Dave Meltzer challenged the idea that Ring of Honor could sell 10,000 tickets for an event, something that no US-based, non-WWE promotion had achieved since WCW in 1999. In response, professional wrestlers Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks organized the independent event All In in September of 2018. This sold out in just 30 minutes and drew a significant audience, making it the largest non-WWE or WCW wrestling event in the United States since 1993. Following the success of All In, speculation arose widely about the creation of a new wrestling promotion. Khan, a lifelong wrestling enthusiast, took a significant step towards realizing his dream in late 2018. He filed trademarks for a new venture, which soon became the highly anticipated professional wrestling promotion known as All Elite Wrestling, or AEW. In a move that would ultimately reshape the wrestling landscape and have a profound impact on the industry's immediate future, AEW was officially announced on January 1st, 2019, along with its inaugural event, Double or Nothing, a sequel to All In, which took place on May 25th, 2019 at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Khan and his father, Shahid Khan, are the promotion's lead investors and are co-owners, with Tony serving as president, CEO, general manager, executive producer, and head of creative for the promotion. Tony Khan reportedly started AEW with a massive investment from his father that was reported to be up to $100 million, with huge stars signing up like Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, Cody Rhodes, The Young Bucks, Brody Lee, as well as new stars like MJF and Darby Allin, it was a new dawn in professional wrestling. On April 25th, 2019, Khan revealed the five-year plan for AEW where he stated this. The five-year plan for AEW is firstly to have built up a brand, secondly to have built up a roster, and thirdly to have established AEW as a top brand in wrestling for an audience who desire fast-paced, exciting action and want a product that is more of a sporting-based product. Its first three months on TNT were successful enough to secure a four-year, $175 million deal with Warner Media to air Wednesday Night Dynamite, a title he had picked a quarter century ago when he sketched out episodes in his junior high notebook. The two-hour program has shaken pro wrestling's power structure by going head-to-head -head and smashing WWE's NXT a few years back in the short-lived Wednesday Night Wars. And it's not the first time Tony's challenged the WWE, with him at one time calling out WWE President Nick Khan, who has no relation to Tony Khan, stating, there's only room for one Khan in the wrestling business. It's me, Tony Khan, not some con man from Connecticut. In March of 2022, Khan announced that he had acquired professional wrestling promotion Ring of Honor, or ROH, from Sinclair Broadcast Group. The acquisition includes ROH assets such as the promotion's video library, brand assets, intellectual property, production equipment, and more. Since then, it's kept running as a separate entity to AEW, often rotating stars across both products. But things have been far from always smooth sailing, though, with Khan's management style consistently under criticism from veterans and fans, particularly in the aftermath of the 2022 All Out Media Scrub and controversies over CM Punk's long-term beef in the locker room with the elite, notably the Young Bucks and Adam Page. Though many have seen the controversies differently and have taken different sides, feeling that Tony should have been tougher throughout and stronger leadership, whether that meant firing Punk earlier or forcing the elite to communicate and be more professional, would have sorted out the situation. Some supported his decision to eventually let Punk go, while others felt Tony letting the company's highest merchandise seller go at a time when ticket sales were generally low was a huge error. Some have suggested that the pressure of booking AEW, especially alongside his two other high-profile roles with the Jacksonville Jaguars and Fulham, have been too much for Tony Khan's plate. Recent Twitter spats have seen Khan taking multiple shots at WWE and passionately detailing why the professional rivalry has become deeply personal for him, revealing that the WWE allegedly attempted to recruit talent from AEW while his mother was seriously ill in the hospital, with fans pointing out William Regal being a notable example. Though, however you feel about Tony Khan, his heart on his sleeve attitude and open dialogue with the fans is what makes Tony Khan as unique as he is. And we, as wrestling fans, are grateful for it. Ultimately, AEW has become a haven for more hardcore fans of the product, with many seeing it as more indie-style wrestling on a far larger scale. Though some criticize its lack of appeal for more casual viewers at times, its place in the world of pro wrestling is more than solidified. From happy networks to running events in a packed out Wembley Stadium with potentially the biggest wrestling crowd of all time, or at least close to it. AEW isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and that's truly great. Having another major promotion only makes professional wrestling as a whole 
greater and a far better place for the talent who entertain us to work within. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know in the comments below how you feel about Tony Khan.